They do occasionally offer these courses in the summer, but it's hit and miss. And the decision may be made to offer the new ones instead. Huh. <laughs> I thought you already had your other math plan. I did. What are you worried about? I'm worried about my classmates. <laughs> I'm trying to advocate for them. <laughs> yes, I'm making the new classes as tough as possible. I heard ready. you say that before. That's yeah. why I did that. Just kidding. They're easy. It's all easy. Okay, so I guess it's fitting that we started with chapter one and we're going to end with chapter two. We jumped around all semester long. And we're going to talk about linear growth, first of all. So we have a recursive relationship is a formula which relates the next value in a sequence to the previous value. If a quantity starts at size p sub zero and grows by d every time period, then the quantity after n time period can be determined using either of these relations. First, you have the recursive form, where p sub n is equal to p sub n minus 1, the previous value, plus d. Or you have the explicit form, where p sub n equals p sub 0 plus d times n. This is my preferred method. Because if I want the seventh value, if I use the recursive form, I have to figure out what the first six are. Whereas this way, I just need to know what p sub 0 is, and I can go from there. So in this equation, d represents the common difference which is the amount that the quantity changes each time n changes by 1. And if you remember any of your algebra, you may know that it looks kind of like the slope-intercept form of a line, which makes sense because d is the change per time period. So let's see how this works. Number of houses in the town has been growing according to a, a recursive rule, p sub n equals p sub n minus 1 plus 30, with an initial population of p sub 0 equals 200. p sub 0 equals 200. We have this p sub n equals p sub n minus 1 plus 30. So we want to calculate p sub 1. Well, if n is 1, n minus 1 is 0. So I have p sub 1 equals p sub 0, which is 200, plus 30, and we get 230. That's simple. To find p sub 2, well, I need 2 minus 1, so p sub 1 plus 30. P sub 1 was 230 plus 30, and we get 260. So far, so good. Very tedious, though, if I want P sub 10, isn't it? Which is where that explicit form comes in, which was P sub n equals P sub 0 plus n times d. And I want to find P sub 10. So P sub 0 is still 200. N is 10. D is 30. We have 200 plus 300 equals 500. Told you it was easy. And lastly, I want to know, when will the number of houses reach 400? So now I know P sub n is 400. And I know P sub 0 is 200. I know D is 30, but I don't know what N is. 
Now to find n, you did say go fast, right? Subtract 200 from both sides. So I have 200 equals 30 times n and divide both sides by 30. And what is that? Anybody know 200 divided by 30? Two hundred divided by thirty. Point six 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 repeating. Six point six seven years. That work. Any questions on using them? I hope that's a costume and not somebody beat you up. It's a costume. <laughs> yeah, I had to ask. Sorry. Everybody got this page? Next page, scream if you need me to wait. No screaming, so I'm going on. Hmm. Population of elk and a national forest was measured to be 12,000 in 2003. And was measured again to be 15,000 in 2007. The population continues to grow linearly. At this rate, what will the elk population be in 2014? So my first point of interest is make sure you know how to do this problem. I mean, make sure you know how to do this problem. That is the subtlest hint I can give you. So, Looking at our explicit form, P sub n equals P sub zero plus n times D. Now we could let this equal P sub zero, right? I don't have a D. However, I do have a P sub four, which means n is four. Okay, that makes sense. So 15,000 equals 12,000 plus four times D. Subtracting 12,000 from both sides, 3,000 equals four times D. Dividing by four, D equals 750. So now I have P sub zero, I have D. I want to know 2014. So how many years from 2003 to 2014? How many? 11. So now N equals 11, and I know D is 750. And I know P sub zero is 12,000. So P sub 11 is P sub zero, which is 12,000, plus N, which is 11, plus D, which is 750. And we have 12,000 plus 8,250. And we have 20,250 L. Any questions on how we did that? It was that was the population in 2007 after four years. So with n equal four, p sub four equals 15,000. And we use that information here to find d. And then we can use all our information on the last one. Any other questions on this one? It's imperative that you understand this question.
And I have one other question for you. What's the difference between what's the difference between an elk and a bear? An elk and a bear? Yeah. Two, two. <laughs> as far as this problem is concerned, there isn't any. <laughs> when you do the homework, you'll understand what I mean. Well, that was some kind of riddle. <laughs> it is. So we're using models to predict future. And this works well in mathematics for the most part. However, there can be some issues, especially when we carry really far out from our current data. So let's look at this next example here and see if we can see what we're talking about. Suppose a four-year-old boy is currently 39 inches. So we'll call that P sub zero is 39. And we expect them to grow two and a half inches per year. So that means D is 2.5. How tall will the boy be in two years? So going back to our Generic formula, P sub n equals P sub zero plus nd at two years. So I'm looking for P sub two. P sub zero is 39. N is two. D is 2.5. 39 plus five, 44 inches. That's about right for a six-year-old, right? Three feet, eight inches. How tall will the boy be in 10 years? So now I'm looking at piece of 10, which again is 39 plus 10 times 2.5. 39 plus 25, 64 inches. That makes him 14 years old and he's 5'4". <laughs> Still reasonable, right? So how tall will he be in 50 years? Using this. So we're looking for P of sub 50. We have 39 plus 50 times 2.5. 39, and what's that, 125? So what are we looking at, 164 inches? Thirteen feet, eight inches at 54. I guess it was all those cigarettes I smoked when I was a kid. I'm not quite six foot. And I'm, I should be 13 feet tall. He suffers from gigantism, which means he wouldn't make it to be five, four years old. Say hey, again? <laughs> There's a medical uh, disorder called gigantism. Yeah. And he wouldn't live to be 54 years old. Yeah. If he had that. But so. you'd be 13 feet tall if you did? Potentially. <laughs> yeah. Live to 20, 30 years old. Think of how hard that would be. Hit your head on everything. Ceilings are what, typically 10 feet? Doors are about seven, eight, maybe. Oh, we only talk about car. So, shall we move on? Exponential growth. So, if a quantity starts at a size P sub zero and grows by R percent, written as a decimal, every time period, then the quantity after N time periods can be determined using either of these relations. I do not like recursive. It's too time consuming. So we have an explicit form. P sub n equals P sub zero times one plus R to the nth. 
We call R the growth rate. The term one plus R is a growth multiplier or common ratio. So let's see how this works. Between 2007 and 2008, Olympia, Washington grew almost 3% to a population of 245,000 people. If this growth rate was to continue, what would the population of Olympia be in 2014? So I have P sub zero is 245,000. I have R is 0 0.03. Now here's where this gets a little tricky. What year is the population 245,000? Two thousand eight, very good. So, how many years pass between two thousand eight and two thousand fourteen? Simple subtraction, no trick. What's fourteen minus eight? Use your calculator if you need to. Six. Six. So n is six. So we're looking for. P sub 6, which is equal to P sub 0, 245,000 times 1 plus 0 0.03 to the 6th power, 245,000 times 1 point 0 0.03 to the 6th power. And if you call, we key that in the calculator like this. 1.03 to the 6 gives us 1.1941. So I have 245,000 times 1.1941. And I get 292,554.5. So what is this number, or what does this number represent? Population. In other words, the number of people. Can we have half a person? Yeah. No. So let's go ahead and round it to 292,555. <laughs> I doubt I would count off if you left it, but... Like even if you were half a person, <laughs> even if you were half a person, you would be considered a whole person. <laughs> right? Yes. I mean, uh, I've seen stories about people that had, were cut at the waist. There were still people. Yeah. It's not made fun. So now we take a slight detour. Common logarithm. See, in the old days, we had tables that we had to use to do this stuff. Yes. Got it? Common logarithm written LOG of X undoes the exponential 10 to the X. This means that the log of 10 to the X is X 
and likewise 10 to the log of x is x. Therefore, 10 to the a equal b is equivalent to saying the log of b equals a. And you may note on your calculator that you have a log button. So I have 10 to the x equals 100. So that tells me the log of 100 <laughs> equals x. So hit your log button. And you'll note it'll open a parenthesis for you. 100, close, enter, and x equals 2. Everybody able to get that that has their calculator? This one translates to the log of 3 equals x. So I have log, log of 3 equals, so x equals 0 0.4771. And you can test it. 10 to the 0. 0.4771. And I get 2.9998. Five, three, one, eight, one. And that's because I rounded that it don't come out perfectly even. So far, so good? Yeah. How about this next one here? What can we do first? Uh, divide. Let's divide by two. Get 10 to the x equals four. So the log of four equals x. X equals 0 0.6021. So that's the easy part. That's what you're going to need to remember. Everybody have this page? Don't like the recursive one. So we have Portland's population since 2007 was about 50, 568,000. Come on, cooperate. And had been growing by about 1.1% each year. Okay. We want to write a recursive or an explicit formula. P sub n equals P sub zero times one plus R to the n. P sub n equals 568,000 times 1.011 to the n. Okay, that's our formula. This trend continues. What will Portland's population be in 2016? Well, how many years from 2007 to 2016? How many? Nine. So N is nine. So we have P sub nine equals 568,000 and 1.011 to the ninth power. 1.011 to the ninth. We have 568,000 
as 1.035. Wait, that's not right. 1.1035. So 1.1035 times 568,000 gives me a population of 626,788. No half people this time. And lastly, if this trend continues, oh, I missed this one on a previous in a previous class. When will Portland's popula population reach 700,000? Oh, now I know why. Yeah. I like the next one better. Because what do we need to do first? Divide by 568,000 on both sides. And you get 1.2324. One plus zero, one, one. Again. So, in your adventures in mathematics, you have learned that you can add the same thing to both sides. You can subtract the same thing from both sides of an equation. You can divide by the same thing on both sides. We just did it. You can multiply by the same thing on both sides. You can take both sides to the same power. You can also take the logarithm of both sides and it remains an equation. So if I take the logarithm of 1.2324 equals the logarithm of 1.011 to the n power. And then there was that, that formula I, I circled many, many times. It told me this is simply n times the logarithm of 1.011. Let me just bring this half down. Then we divide by the log of 1.011. So I have the logarithm of 1.2324 over the logarithm of 1.011 equals n. Now, to key this into your calculator, <laughs> since you're dividing, start by opening a parenthesis. Then you hit the log button, and it's going to open a parenthesis for you. Type in your 1.2324, close the parentheses that it opened for you, and close the parentheses you, you open. Then hit your division, open parentheses again, Hit your logarithm, it'll open a parenthesis. 1.011, close and close. That's the hardest part of it. Or you could just find a log 1.2324 and then find a log 1.011 and just divide that way as well. But I'm lazy. Log of 1.2324, close, close, divided by open, log 1.011, close, close, enter, and I get 19.1. I think that was years, wasn't it? Any questions on that one? Everybody okay? Ready for the page change? All 
All right, no screaming, I'm moving. I just need log of 1.011. It gives me like 4.7511 to the negative three. Am I doing? I think I'm doing something. No, you're not. Okay. Hold on. Let me punch it in and see what I get. Yeah, so you're getting 4.7511. Five five nine one times ten to the negative three. Yeah. I just want to make sure I have that part. I had that. One, two, three, zero, zero decimal places. That's, that's what that means. Okay. That's why I recommend doing it this way. Because do you really want to type in all those decimal places? All right. This way you don't have to. Everybody else have it? Ready to roll? Again, make sure you understand this page. Highly important. To understand this problem. It's the same as the last one. I think. Oh, it doesn't give the percent. A native wolf species has been reintroduced into a national forest. Originally, 200 wolves were transplanted. After three years, population had grown to 270. If the population grows exponentially, write an explicit formula for the number of wolves. P sub n equals P sub zero times one plus R to the n. So I have P sub zero, but I don't have R. However, I have P sub three. So P sub three equals P sub zero plus times one plus R to the third. P sub 3 is 270. P sub 0 is 200. Okay. Now, the most common mistake I see on this problem, hint, 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 is that for some reason people subtract 200 instead of dividing by 200. Please do not make that error. We divide both sides by 200 and we get 1.3. Five equals one plus r to the third power. Now, if I take the cube root of one plus r to the third power, I just get one plus r. So if I take a cube root of this, I need to take a cube root of that. So on this side, I get one plus r. Here I have 1.35, hit your caret button, open the parentheses, one divided by three, close your parentheses, and you should get 1.1052. 1 okay? So R is equal to 0 0.1052. I took the cube root here, both sides. Cube root of something cube gives me that. The cube root of 1.35 we did right here. Okay. okay. Then I just subtracted one from both sides which I really didn't need to do because I need one plus R. So now P sub N equals P sub zero, 200 times 1.1052 to the nth power. Now I wanna know after 10 years, so P sub 10, 200 times 1.1052, 
to the tenth power. One point one zero five two to the tenth. So I get two hundred times two point seven one nine zero. And I get five forty three point Seven nine nine four four two six, and again we're talking wolves. So five hundred forty four wolves. Fun, isn't it? Come on. Just say it. Not. I'm not gonna ask. I can think of lots. Of <laughs> well, so can I. But. And the last part is. This trend continues. How long will it take the population to grow to 1,000 wolves? So now P sub n is 1,000. 200 times 1.1052 to the nth power. First thing is divide both sides by 200. 5 equals 1.1052 to the nth power. You have an unknown as an exponent. That pretty much is a sign that you need to take the logarithm of both sides. So the log of five equals the log of 1.1052 to the nth power. And if you remember that thing that I circled many times tells us this. Okay. So now I just need to divide both sides by the log of 1.1052. So I have the log of 5 over the log of 1.1052 equals n. Parentheses, log, opens, 5, close, close. Divided by parentheses, log, opens, 1.1052, close, close. And you should get 16.09. So again, does everybody understand this particular problem? You could do it on your own, right? Especially if it has the same numbers. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I'm going to write this on some flashcards and I'm going to memorize it. <laughs> Otherwise, you can just don't forget the other one. Go ahead and put your red X in my test for that one. <laughs> Let me get halfway through and be like, I'm done with this. <laughs> yes, I would, but I'll do it anyway. Who wants to learn about logistic growth? <laughs> Anybody? No. Essentially, it's exponential growth, but you have a maximum population. And population at some point where you can't have more than that amount. Think of like fish in a the lake. There's only so many resources or people on a planet. Oh, is that like Bill Gates theory? There's, there's <laughs> so many resources. And once you get to a certain population, there's not enough resources, so some of them dies off. That's what happens with logistic growth. That maximum amount is called a carrying capacity. And unless you really want to see this, No. <laughs> Mine too. I got another class. So that brings us to this. We are done. 
That is it. And we have a whole month. What the heck are we going to do? Have a fire pit and we can meet there and roast marshmallows and say we did math. <laughs> we don't have to do, well, you have to do math. But... We can go home and improve. So here's what we're going to do. Thursday, we're going to re review for exam three. Okay. Sound good? So we don't have a class at all. Either, so. Hold on. Let me get to it. Oh, then the week of the sixth, which is class meeting, excuse me, the seventh and the ninth. Again, I give you two days to take the exam. Please come during one of those two days. We are running short of time. Then on the 14th, there will be an optional day where you can come and talk and ask me questions about homework if you haven't done it all, which is silly because by then we will have given you all the answers. Although there's quite a few that haven't turned in homework. And we can talk about the project if you need help with that. Then on the 16th, we will review for the final. Or more importantly, this will be the day that, <laughs> um, excuse me, any tests that I have of yours will be returned. So you need to be here on the 16th because final exam is based on the test. Those of you that have been coming online instead of coming to class, you're going to want to be here for that one. Then the 21st, that's the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. We're, <coughs> we're off Wednesday through Friday that week. So how many of you are going to be out of town anyways? So I don't want to drive out here in a holiday week either. So no class on the 21st. And of course, no class on the 23rd. When we come back on the 28th, We'll review for the final, more if needed. And then on the 30th, I'll give you a chance to take the final early. Some people have more than one class. Who wants to take four finals in one week? As far as time is concerned, you are allotted two and a half hours. This classroom is empty till six o'clock. And then I have the six o'clock class. So if you need the time, you'll be able to have it. So don't let that stop you from coming early. The other thing that you may want to consider, okay, the fifth is finals week. So we don't have class because I'll be giving the final to my other in-person version of this course. So our final is on Thursday the 7th at two o'clock. I don't know why they do that to us. So if that's going to be an issue, you definitely may want to be ready for it on the 30th. I'm even willing, if you are ready, to let you take it on the 28th. But again, it's up to you. Let's take it on the 28th and spell it. Can you take it again? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. So you want to take it twice? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> if you are in the in-person <laughs> class, which class are you in, Drew? This is only for the people in the in-class section. Yeah, you could take the final today if you want. It's there. Yes. All the online stuff is available as soon as you get to it. You gotta have a well, if you want to take it right now, I can bring it Thursday. 
Thank you for giving me something. What was the uh, the deal with like the poorly on the final? Oh thing? yeah, that's what I forgot. So remember, if you scored poorly on one of the three exams that we take, exam one, two, or three, but you buckled down and you did better on the final. I will replace your lowest test score with your final exam score. Not the other way around. So are there any questions? What happens to the other score? I'm sorry? What happens to your final score then? You still have a final score. It's 25% of your grade. Okay. Oh. Appreciate it. Thank you. If you have no questions and you sign the roll sheet, you can head out. Uh, by the way, there's a very uh, older student friendly.